This example is taken from the midterm 2015. So this is an actual midterm caliber problem. So we're talking about water, a density of 998 kilograms per cubic meter is contained behind a semicircular gate with radius two meters. So we've got, here's our gate AB and it's hinged at A and we're going to neglect the weight of the gate and just calculate the forces based on the hydrostatic forces. And so what we need to do in part A is calculate the horizontal and vertical components of the hydrostatic force on gate AB. We're going to assume unit depth into the page, and we want to be careful to clearly indicate the direction of the forces. That's worth quite a bit on a midterm because it indicates that you understand the problem. And then in part B, we want to calculate the force here at applied horizontally at point B to hold this gate in place. And I've shown here on the midterm, you were given uh, figure 2.13, which shows the centroids and second moments of areas of surfaces. So you have that at your disposal. Now, in this particular case, it doesn't ask you to draw the hydrostatic pressure distribution on the gate. But I, I strongly recommend you get in the habit of doing this, and it'll become clear in a moment. So here's our gate AB. And B is at the free surface, so the pressure goes to zero. And what I've drawn here using vectors is the pressure distribution on this surface. Of course, it would be high at A and zero at B, and all along the surface, it would be normal to surface AB. So why would you draw this? Well, just looking at this distribution, this is the force of the water on the gate. We can see clearly that the horizontal force is going to be to the left, right? All of these arrows, except for this one at the bottom, they all have a horizontal component to the left. And you can see that, okay, there's some small errors here that have an upward component, but the, the larger errors at the bottom of the distribution have a much larger vertical component. So you can see just looking at that and thinking about it, that the net vertical force on the gate from the water is going to be downwards. So right away, we know the directions. So now it's just a matter of getting the numbers. Okay. So we start in all of these problems by drawing a free body diagram of the water adjacent to the gate. So I've picked this little semicircle of, of water here, and I've redrawn it down here, and I've put on the forces. You've got the weight, you've got the vertical force. Now this is the force of the gate on the water. You've got the force of the gate on the water in the horizontal direction. And then this face here, AB, because we've, we've cut this piece of water out and we've isolated, it would have a hydrostatic pressure distribution on it. And this is the hydrostatic force on surface AB. And of course, you want to keep in mind that the forces shown in this diagram are the opposite of what we're looking for. We're looking for the force of the water on the gate, whereas this diagram shows the forces of the gate on the water. Okay, so if we do a static equilibrium in the vertical direction, so some of the forces in the vertical direction zero because this fluid's not moving, we could just see that the vertical force is just equal to the weight of the water. And we've got the line of action here from our table from our textbook. And so the, the weight of the water is the gamma times the volume. This is a unit depth into the page. So the volume of that is going to be pi r squared divided by 2, because it's half a circle, times depth. So Fv is so gamma times pi r squared upon 2 times depth. So I've reproduced that equation up here. And then it's just a matter of substituting in the values. The gamma of water, you're given in the problem that the density is 998 times G gives 9790 newtons per cubic meter. That's water at 20 degrees C. The radius of this gate is two meters. So pi two squared divided by two, and then that's the unit depth. And you get 61.51 kilonewtons. And you've got to make sure you indicate that the force of the water on the gate is down, even though, be careful, because this arrow shows up. That's the force of the gate on the water. And because there's only two vertical forces here, and the sum of the moments have to equal zero, they have to be in line. And so we can calculate this distance 4r upon 3 pi. So 4 times 2 meters divided by 3 pi gives 0 0.848 meters from this face AB. So we have the magnitude, direction, and location of the vertical force. Next, we'll consider the horizontal force. So I've reproduced the free body diagram again here. By the way, when you're doing this on the exam, always draw a separate free body diagram. 
don't draw it on the diagram of the problem because you need to isolate a section of water. And what we have is the force on surface AB, this vertical face. So we can use our techniques that we learned in the previous video for vertical gates to get the force AB. And that's got to equal FH. And they have to be in line because we can't have any moment. This thing's not spinning. It's, it's got no angular momentum. So FH and FAB have to be in line. And we can easily figure out where FAB is. It acts below the centroid at distance YC that we talked about for plane gates in the previous video. So I've drawn this surface AB here over here, and I've put the dimensions on. That's one meter depth. And the total height of the surface is going to be two radiuses, which is four meters. And I've shown the center of area, the center of gravity here is going to be at one R, so two meters. And the force AB acts, as we learned in the previous video, below the center of area. Uh, the center of pressure is always below the center of area. And so we can use our plane gate methods to determine the force. FH equals FAB, and the force on surface AB is gamma, height of the center of gravity, times area of surface AB. And the height of the center of gravity is just the dead middle of that plane surface, which is two meters. And the area is four meters by one meter. So we can substitute in here gamma. Here's our height of the center of gravity and the area. And we get 78.32 kilonewtons to the left. Now, again, students often get the arrows wrong. We already showed in the first part of this problem where we drew the pressure distribution that we expect the force to be to the left. So make sure you get that straight because your free body diagram shows FH in the other direction for reasons that we've discussed. Okay, so now we have FH. The last thing to do is just to determine where FH acts, the line of action. We treat, of course, AB as a plane surface. So it's using the methods for a plane gate that we learned in a previous video here, you can get the location of FAB. It acts below the centroid of surface AB by a distance of minus IXX sine theta. Now, in this case, it's a vertical gate, so theta is 90 degrees. The surface meets the free surface at an angle of 90 degrees. The height of the center of gravity of surface AB and area AB. These are pretty straightforward. This surface here, AB, has depth of one meter and height of four meters. So it's the depth times height cubed divided by 12. And we get a second moment of area. That would be the moment of area around a horizontal axis passing through the centroid of 5.333 meters to the fourth. And now it's just a matter of making the substitutions. IXX, sine of 90 degrees, which is one. The height of the center of gravity of surface AB is two meters over here. And then the area of the surface is four meters squared. And we get that the force FAB acts at 0.667 below the centroid. So now we have both forces. We have the vertical force and the horizontal force, and we have their locations. So now it's possible to find that force at B required to hold the gate in place. So the last part of the question was to determine the horizontal force applied at B to the right that would hold the gate in place. And of course, we draw a free body diagram for our gate. We put all the forces on it. Don't forget there are hinge forces at A. So there's FAX and FAY. This is our horizontal force, hydrostatic force. There's the weight of the fluid, the vertical force. And I've put on the locations where they act. We just calculated that FH acts below the centroid at 0.6667 meters. Now, don't forget we use point A because we want to avoid having to calculate these hinge forces. So we take the moments about A and I've taken clockwise as positive. So FB has a clockwise moment and FH and FV have negative moments. So this is basic statics. This is your statics course. So FB times 2R, that's the moment arm, equals FH. Now, this distance here is R, so this distance here is R minus YCP, which turns out to be 1.33 meters, and it's counterclockwise, so it's uh, minus. 
And then FV, we just showed that it acts at 0.8488 from the hinge in the horizontal direction. So there's the moment arm. And then it's just a matter of substituting in the forces that we have here. And recognizing that the moment arm for B is 4 meters, and you get an answer of 39.2 kilonewtons. Always recommend rounding final answers to about three digits. And that completes this problem.